Alright, hello everyone. Welcome to a small intro video to this game called Gemcraft Labyrinth. It is from the Flash era of games, back when you could play RuneScape in your web browser and cool math games at school in the computer lab. This is a tower defense game from my childhood, and I loved it more than Bloons Tower Defense. To be honest, I haven't looked into tower defense games too much recently, but it seems like a few of these types of games from my childhood had sequels, let alone are alive today. The Gemcraft series does seem to be hanging on, but these old games still have a place. So the basics of this game are gems and crafting, as you can probably guess. Gems have tears, and at lower levels, show it with their shape. There are eight types of gems, each with special abilities. Some poison enemies. Some make more currency with each hit. They show this with their color. You can combine gems to make higher tiers, including ones of different colors. The secondary effects dilute. But at 2 to 3 colors, they are stronger than 50% and 33% of base, respectively. At least my memories from a decade ago say that. What you just saw there was a skill upgrade system. Play the game, and you can get cheaper gems and all that eventually. Not integral to the gameplay, but neat. Gives you a reason to go back and replay the earlier levels, as higher scores become possible simple enough. The wave system is different from a lot of other tower defense games I've seen though. You can send waves early. You get bonus points and currency for this. This means not only is it a risk reward, but if you're like me and have trouble not pushing things to their limit, this game has you covered. Each wave has different enemies with different specialties. Swarms, big tough guys, shit like that. So it keeps it interesting. There is a bit more strategy to add in as well. There are different tower types to slot gems into. A default tower. A trap that limits damage and range, but increases secondary effects. And one that boosts gems around it. We won't go into too many details with this though. That's just a little bit of extra info to get you to try the game. And one last thing, before I really get into strategy and more specific thoughts. Currency and HP are shared. This was something I never saw in another tower defense game growing up, and it was amazing. Just have to love those Kaioken builds. Oh, and in case you didn't notice, I have this game sped up a good bit. 3x speed. Real games are definitely not this fast. So don't worry if you have trouble keeping up. Also, the hissing sound is not my mic. It is the background sound of rain, but sped up. It was a lot nicer as I was recording. Alright. Here, my plan is to use traps with the gems that generate currency on hit, combined with a nice set of walls to slow down enemies. My hope here is to just build up a nice good bit of currency and buy a high level gem to put right at the exit. So even though my health increases every time they pass by thanks to my traps, if they remove even a slight bit more than I heal, I am on the path to dying. As I take damage, I also run out of money to buy defenses with too. So that quickly compounds my issue. This does have the benefit of quickly killing you if your defenses aren't up to par though. So you don't waste much time trying to salvage a dead run. So with that in mind, I pivot and decide, hey, maybe it is better to just be a coward and use stronger gems in positions. So instead of blocking things off to force enemies to take longer paths, 
I decide to put that currency into a few strong gems to clean up enemies while I generate money. This means I obviously get less currency coming in, and a few percentage points of difference may not seem like much, but we can't forget that it is exponential. Every bit of money saved or earned puts you into a position to save or earn more. It is expensive being poor. This is a perfect situation for the pink gem, which reduces the armor of enemies, making its next hits and the hits of other gems stronger. So I use it as a strong fast gem at the front, as well as the one in the trap. The yellow gem has a chance to hit for more damage, which helps it ignore armor. These gems aren't the best pairing, but they are what you are given. And I also showcase a nice ability you have in this game, gem dropping. You can sacrifice gems to do a large AoE damage to enemies. I buy new gems to do this on the last wave, to reduce their numbers enough for my gems to finish them off on their second run through. I do not think I would have survived if I just let them charge in multiple times. But anyways, in this next section, we do have a better combo. Yellow and green. Green has a chance to hit multiple enemies. We combine these into one gem, so that gem both has a chance to hit multiple enemies, and then deal them extra damage, to hopefully take them all out. This makes it strong for lots of small enemies and medium enemies. In fact, it is good on larger enemies paired with swarms as well. Because it can shoot the big ones and end up taking out some of the little guys around them. With that strategy, I get a little greedy. Instead of buying a new gem, I try to save up currency to upgrade my existing one. That doesn't work out as my gem gets overwhelmed and I lose a lot of HP. That lost HP could have been used to buy extra defenses, but now it is just gone. This means I'll be on the back foot for the last few rounds here. I decide to change my approach on this next try. I build walls in an attempt to slow down enemies and force them to spend more time around my strongest gem. That only helps when it isn't fully saturated though. It is attacking non-stop, so that doesn't really make much of a difference. What would though? is not sending in waves immediately. The game is a lot easier when you don't go full tryhard, ironically enough. That is one thing that makes this game great. There are some difficulty options to fine tune the experience, like making tougher enemies or making it endless, but that is not where the core of the difficulty is. The core comes from that way of system. Trying to do better is directly making the game harder in a dynamic way. Every time I click on that next wave, telling it to go ahead, and throwing more on my plate, I keep throwing in as much as I think I can take. My hubris is often my downfall, but each little bit of energy I get from doing it tells me to push it a little further, get that exponential accumulation become unstoppable with just one more push. I'm sure you can take it. Why not another? This game also has achievements and such. A staple of a well-rounded game. I got a large amount of them on my first playthrough a long time ago. But honestly, that entire maze is a whole lot of levels. They start with their own sets of gems unlocked. Towers already set and paths, you won't run out of things to do. But anyways, that's been an intro to Gemcraft Labyrinth. I'll leave you off with my normal video ending routine. Anyways, have a nice day, and don't forget to check out my other social media in the description. I stream a good bit, so come tune in for that sometime.